Hello YouTube and welcome to this channel. In this video I'm going to continue the previous video which was the uh, design of uh, inductor and in this uh, video I'm going to show you how you can start uh, adding the excitations. First and foremost you have to uh, create your uh, excitation terminals and to do that you want to select the coil where you want to actually add the terminals and you can easily right click on the coil and go to the edit and then to the surface section and then over here you can select the YZ section so you get two terminals like this and then you right click on that and you go to the edit boolean separate bodies and then you get rid of one of these and then you get one terminal here I'm gonna go and change the name of this terminal from uh, coil section to uh, perhaps coil terminal and, um, and that's good enough and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to uh, basically select this and right click on it and go to the excitation and select it as a coil terminal. Um, I'm going to put the number of turns to be 150 turns and uh, we can leave it like the coil terminal as it is and press OK. So we basically what we created is we created a loop inside this coil that is going to run a current inside. We haven't decided how much current we are going to run in so we just know that we are going to have a coil. We have a terminal here. This is the terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and first uh, create a winding or winding, and uh, I'm just going to so go select that. And uh, and uh, select the voltage here and uh, press OK for now and I will tell you what I'm going to do with it. Um, I can go and add this to the winding that we have but um, what thing we want to do is we want to basically create our own um, basically uh, excitations and this is a very very cool tool here that I'm going to show you here. Um, when you go to the Maxwell 3D there is a thing called design sets and you may ask what does the design set do so the design set is when you want to create whatever sort of like arbitrary uh, waveform and uh, let's say for here we call it like uh, um, my data set okay and then you can go and create um, any form so I'm going to show you how it works for the X and Y value and these are any values it can be time it can be voltage it can be frequency whatever you want to know so you just basically say okay X is going to be zero Y is zero if X is like um, uh, 250 micro in the, in our case it's a microsecond but anything can be anything uh, y is 1 and then y is negative 1 uh, and you can guess that it's 750 and uh, you can see that on the right we have a very nice preview of uh, the waveform that you're creating and so because of that we basically be able to uh, make sure that everything is fine okay so that would be something like this okay So uh, I did a mistake here. This should be zero because uh, it starts from zero and then goes up and then goes down and then goes up. I think. So that's how it works. Okay. So we create this and we press OK and we say OK. I have my data set. And then over in the windings, we go to the voltage because we define it to be as a voltage. And uh, you know you can you can always give some uh, uh, a series resistance for your voltage source that you are going to apply. So let's say 25 uh, ohm or whatever. And uh, when it comes to the voltage, now you can apply your voltage. Let's say your voltage has a DC voltage. I'm going to say uh, 70 volt of the DC voltage. And then I want to have a sine wave. Um, the sine wave, you don't need to create it in the data set. It's basically a simple uh, sine. And then it's a, it's a basically a predefined function. And you go with pi, which is another predefined uh, constant. That it means pi times time. The word time means time in um, transit frequencies. So this is another a character or like let's say variable that is already defined. You can say freq, F-R-E-Q. That's another defined variable. You can, uh, in your magnetic study, you can uh, define some materials property uh, based on freq. So when the frequency changes, then the material property change. So when you do the simulation, you will see that in different frequencies, the material property is changing as well, and you can uh, see the results at the end of the day. And uh, I'm going to just say plus 5. So now here is where we are applying our periodic um, 
basically uh, functions that you just created. And in this case, in order to do that, you have to say, so this is the amplitude 5, and then you have to basically say PWL, PWL, and then you say periodic, okay? And then when you say periodic, then you need to give two things. One, a data set that you just created. I'm going to call it my data set. So this is the data set that you want to go with. Second, what is the unit? Is it the, what is the x axis represents? In our case, the x axis represents time. What would be the y axis? Well, we are just writing it down. It's voltage. And as you can see, this is just to show that what the voltage is. So the only thing that we need to define for our my data, my data set is what is the x axis. We already know the y axis is, is voltage. And as soon as you say time, then you're good to go. And you can press OK on this, and you get the beautiful and nice error like that. SIN, uh, SI is not a function, but SIN is a sign. So I forgot to put N here. There we go. So now you have your uh, functions defined, and uh, you have a sine wave. You have a voltage of a DC. So basically, what we did here is we created a DC voltage of 70 volt. We created a sine volt, sine wave of 20 volt, and we created uh, uh, basically 20 volt peak to peak. And then we and also we created a 5 volt peak to peak and 1 kilohertz rectangular wave that is going to be on top of the sine wave. Okay, this is this is pretty much very customized uh, function here. So we can actually um, apply this. I'm going to just right click here and add a solution type here. And uh, the solutions, uh, you know, uh, going to be I'm going to go with 100 microsecond and 20 millisecond. Uh, for that and uh, you can also have like some field to be saved and you can basically see your fields That's basically the whole idea here to be able to see that so I'm gonna put these fields to be shown here and uh, I'm gonna leave it like this uh, you can also um, Calculate the inductance by right-clicking on your design and then you go to the design settings and in the matrix Computation you can say compute inductance matrix here over, and over here and that will basically create uh, matrix calculations or whatever um, uh, sort of like inductance we have for each terminal and that is that oh another thing is when you are in the transient simulations you do need to always take care of your own mesh and for that um, because transient simulations needs to do relies on your meshing while in the magnetostatic you come with the initial meshing and then it starts doing a lot of refinements to get into the error percentage that you want to get transient engine does not rely on error, error. the result that the transient simulation gives you is the absolute results and therefore, depending on how much accuracy of mesh you have, you will get how much accuracy at the end of the day. So this is all up to you how to create your mesh. And um, to just give you how you can do that, um, you can uh, first uh, apply a mesh to the core. So you can click on the core and uh, you can um, you know, uh, go to the operation mesh and then you can select the unse unselection and then you can go with the length base. And uh, I'm going to call this one core just to know uh, what we are doing here. And uh, you know, you can say, I want to make sure that the number of uh, mesh elements are uh, within a thousand uh, you know, tetrahedrons. For the coil, you can do exactly the same thing. And uh, you could have like selecting both of them and say the number should be 2,000. These are the same thing, okay? And uh, again, on the on selection, and you can go like this and say this is the coil. And uh, there we go, thousand, good. And uh, I believe if you do, um, okay, also another thing is when you go to the Maxwell excitation, set eddy current effects, you just either say, I do want to care about current on the coil or I don't. Um, just the fact that you show up in this window, it will get rid of one warning that uh, they might give you. So if you just open up this window, that means that you saw this and you choose to have selected or not select this box. And now if I do the check, um, everything should not be good. Of course, we, we do still need to create a region here, and uh, that is uh, absolutely very simple. And because it's a very simple design, I'm going to go with 500% uh, padding from each side. So it's a huge uh, region that we created, but we don't care because it's not going to take that much long to simulate. So this is our uh, circuit again, one more time. And what the? Okay, so the coil uh, terminal, the winding, the conductor number. Oh. Uh, another trick that I forgot to tell you is when you are in the winding and you add a coil into that and if the coil has number of turns you, what you should do is you have to make sure that you are specifying that the uh, the winding is stranded not the solid 
So with that, and then you do this, you should be able to get all check marks with no warnings around here. So this will conclude our excitations, meshing, and uh, boundary conditions for this uh, particular simulations. I'm going to come uh, with the results and uh, talk talk you about the results um, in in a short time. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.